Hi everyone, welcome back to Data Cadence and in this particular video, we are going to talk about NDCG or Normalized Discounted Cumulative Gain. Now NDCG is a very popular metric when it comes to ranking based machine learning problems and you could encounter this particular metric in an interview question, say in a condition where you are in a system design, a machine learning system design interview and the interview asks you that whatever ranking solution that you have proposed. Now you want to evaluate that. So when it comes to evaluation, there would be two types of metrics. The first one would be your business metrics and that could vary on different problems, right? So it could be things as simple as your click through rate or a conversion rate and so on. There is no one single metric that I can talk about that as I mentioned would vary based on the problem or the use case that you are trying to solve. But often when it comes to machine learning uh, metrics that you want to use for the evaluation. So definitely NDCG is one of the well-known metrics in the industry and in the literature when it comes to evaluation of ranking systems, right? So I'm going to take a very simple example. And the whole goal here is to make you understand NDCG in such a way that you never forget it and how it's done and to give you a very intuitive understanding using a very simple and a realistic example, right? So let's consider that a user comes on Amazon and he or she wants to shop for headphones. So a user would come in, they would say, type in buy headphones and they would get a list of headphones that would appear on the results page, right? So say headphone one, headphone two, and so on up till headphone K. Now these are often ranked based on the relevance to the search query and how likely will a user click and make a purchase once these sorted list or these ranking order sort of appears on the results page. And now there are different bits and pieces to the NDCG that I will cover and you will have a very good understanding of how things work under the hood. So the first one is relevance ranking. So each headphone is assigned a score based on how relevant it is. That's the overall goal. And do mind that I'm not talking about how these ranking systems are developed because that is a very detailed topic in itself. And that is something that we might cover in some other video. But the idea is once you have a ranking system in place, how do you ensure or how do you validate that whatever ranking your system has generated, whether it is good or whether it is bad. So let's continue with this. So the second piece would be the cumulative gain. So the cumulative gain at a certain position K in the list is the sum of the relevant score of all items up to that particular position. So that's what we have mentioned that the cumulative gain at a kth position is simply the sum of all the relevant score up to that particular position. And that would give rise to the discounted cumulative gain. That is the relevance would diminish in importance as you go down the list. That's pretty intuitive. Therefore, we need to apply a discount factor to the relevance score based on the position of the item. So here you can see that the discounted cumulative gain at the kth position would simply be the sum of the relevance up to that particular position and you divide that by the discount factor that is usually given as log to the base 2 i plus 1 and this discount factor would ensure that the relevance scores are discounted more for the items that are ranked lower in the list right and that makes a lot of intuitive sense if you don't really understand it think about it and you will get a very good understanding right just take some time and then just think about it maybe take an example of five elements in the list and just think about why this particular discount factor is being applied and that will become clear now we let let's just discuss about idcg that is ideal discounted cumulative gain so once you have this what you do is you essentially sort your relevant scores based on the descending order right so that's what it shows here that the idcg at k is nothing but the sum of the relevance of the sorted items in your list and you divide that by the discount factor. So the rel of sorted i is basically the relevant score of the ith item in the sorted list. And this sorting, again, it's very intuitive that we'll do it in the descending order. That is the items with the higher relevant scores would come up higher and that's how we'll do the sorting, right? So finally, the NDCG at K would be the discounted cumulative gain at the kth position divided by the ideal discounted cumulative gain at the kth position. And this value will always lie between zero and one. And the higher the NDCD, NDCG value is, that is the better your ranking is, right? So how to compute the relevance score? So a lot of these textbooks will, will teach you whatever I just told you, but often a very, very general or a very basic question is that how do I compute my relevance scores in the first place? So sadly, there is no mathematical formulation that I can tell you. There is no fixed mathematical formulation for the computation of relevance score. And that is very much context and problem dependent. But the simple example that I gave you, I'll just explain to you how is relevance score computed or how we can compute the relevance score based on this particular example, right? So if you consider the headphones example, so say you have headphone A, headphone B and so on up till headphone E. Now intuitively, if you think about a good relevance score would be a product which has a higher rating and a lower price. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of intuitive sense, right? 
So let's say we have these five headphones. So these are the respective prices that I mentioned and then these are the ratings. Now relevance can easily be computed based on the combination of both price and the rating that we saw above. And you can assign more weightage to higher ratings and lower prices. That is you can develop a relevance score that is directly proportional to your ratings and which is inversely proportional to your prices. And again, that, that makes a lot of uh, sense and it's just it's plain common sense if you think about it. So the first thing that you could do in this case is to normalize the price. So for normalization, what you can do is that you can take the price of the respective item and divide it by the maximum price amongst all the headphones. So in this case, the maximum price amongst these five headphones is $150. So you simply take the price of each of these headphones and you divide it by the maximum that is 150 to get the normalized price, right? And in this case, the relevance score can simply be defined as W1 times rating plus W2 times the inverse normalized price, right? And the inverse normalized price in this case could simply be given as 1 over the normalized price that you just saw above. And again, W1 and W2 can be selected based on intuition or business requirements. There is no fixed rule. And in fact, there is no fixed rule to compute the relevance score that we just talked about. It's just plain intuition based on the different context and the problem that you're trying to solve. You can go ahead and develop your own relevance scoring function, right? So this is just one example. And now based on this W1 and W2, let's say you pick up 0.7 for the rating and W2 you take it as say 0.3 for the inverse normalized price. Again, it's no fixed rule. These numbers might depend, but let's say that based on my business context, I choose that I'll give 70% weightage to the ratings and 30% weightage to the price when computing the relevant score. So you can simply plug in those values. You can take the inverse normalized price. You can easily find using the normalized price and rating you already know, right? And W1 and W2, as I mentioned for this example, let's say we pick up 0.7 and 0.3. Now, once you have all of these values, you can get the relevance score for each of these five items in the list. And once you get that, you can easily plug it in the IDCG, the DCG, and ultimately end up with the NDCG score. So this was a very simple video in which I tried to explain you NDCG. Now, these are metrics that not a lot of people often talk about, or a lot of people don't even know about all these things. But it's very important because ranking is a very is a very generic kind of a use case that you might end up with in a machine learning system design interview. So how to develop ranking models is a different thing. But once you have a ranking model, how to evaluate that? That's a very basic question and that you can expect in any of the interviews. So thank you so much for watching. It takes a lot of effort to just come up with these simple examples and, you know, write these notes and explain everything to you simply. So I plan on uploading more such videos and the whole goal is to make you interview ready and make sure that you understand the fundamentals and the basics so that you never face any sort of issues in your day-to-day -day work or for any interview for that matter, right? So thank you so much for watching this video till the end and uh, take care and bye-bye. See you in the next video. Please like and subscribe this particular video. Subscribe to this particular channel, I mean, and like this particular video. I plan on uploading more such content for you. So thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Have a good day. Take care and bye-bye.